Donnie. Whoa. Donnie, you, we gotta go outside. Why? Clear situation. Hey, Kevin, what happened? No, we just, just come on. Dude, someone just dumped this box out here, and it looks like there's a big freaking berm in here, and there's another container inside. Like, yeah. literally, they just like dumped it out of their car and then took off. Probably because we have cameras on the building over there. All right, so currently we're in front of Nerd, and Rob caught me in his in the room in there, and he said something was amiss. Why, dude? Look at this. Is Holy that a, sh! Is that a retic? No, this is a berm, dude. Oh, your favorite snakes in Someone there. Someone literally just dumped this berm, and there's there's another container in here too. <laughs> what the? F what dude? You, wait, what's in the bags? I don't know. It could. I literally don't know. There's probably something venomous in there. Uh, that would be bad. <laughs> that would be really bad. We're gonna have to grab Kevin to unbag those because I don't wanna, it could be something dangerous. Real talk, this happens all the time. We do get a lot of animals dropped off here, but we we take animals in. Literally in 2019, we took in over a thousand reptiles. Look, it's about to pee on me, geez. Kevin's not going to believe what's in this box. He's not going to like it. He won't like it at all. What do you think he's going to say? Uh, I, honestly, I don't know what he's going to say, but uh, I don't think it's going to be good. Don't drop your reptiles off here. Don't do it. We take them in. Just call us. Do you know how hot it was today? Insanely hot. Like, you can see I'm, like, drenched in sweat. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys want some water? No. Yes! No problem. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Sweet. That was great. <laughs> this was dropped. This is for you. This was a gift yeah. from one of our customers, apparently. Yeah. We found this outside today. You know how it is today? Are you familiar? It did it get left in the rain? I don't know. It's a good it's a good box though, right? I got a free Burmese Python. Yeah. <laughs> Angry free mermaids python. So my first problem right now, <laughs> mites. Does this thing have mites? You tell me. Oh, I, you guys brought it in this room. Listen, there's other things in this uh, box too. I just know that she's not contained very well, or he. So just so you see the way that snake is behaving. Yeah. It's upset. It's hissing. Its head's a little caved in too. Just what? so you know, he's got like a narrow head. So this actually stayed in this box. Well, okay. no, no, no. We, we found it in the box, but it's managed to get its way out. It, there was a bag inside of it. It got out of the bag. There's oh, also got out of the bag. Snakes right. that might be venomous, that for all I know. So you're gonna have to open those too. I don't know. I, I didn't go. You're in kidding there. me, right? It's venomous. It could be. Could be. Look at the box. Okay. So <laughs> all I guess I will get a hook. Yeah. I'm just trying to save your life, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah. I've equipped now. Okay. So that's a very upset snake. Do me a favor. If I'm supposed to take these out, can we get a bin? Come on, a, deep, a, deep, a deep bin? Yeah. Well, how, how often does this happen? Okay, all right, so what we do, I just have to get myself laid into this thing. We do actually get uh, pets from people that uh, maybe something has gone bad. Certainly with COVID, it's really like people losing jobs and all the different stuff like that. So it's a lot of responsibility to actually get these animals. So we get them surrendered. A lot of times downstairs at our uh, store zoo creatures and actually people will often pay some kind of surrender fee because a lot of times these animals are actually in um, subpar health, you know, and that a lot of times is probably taking very decent keepers and then putting them in a bad position where maybe they don't even have a place to live. Maybe they got the animal originally for all the you know wrong reasons. But a lot of times I think you also get people that really care about these animals and they want to do something responsible. Bringing them to us is one of those things where you're being responsible. Not letting it go in the woods or anything like that. Ultimately, uh, tropical species, this is a Burmese python, would not live far beyond fall. So uh, Jeremy's gonna get me a bin. There's clearly, I'm told there's two other snakes. Snakes are they? I hope they're snakes. They're All right, like well snakes. there's two other things in bags. So I'm gonna cut this. And I just, I'm a little bit worried about mites. Hi buddy. 
<laughs> okay, he's really grumpy. Alright. Hi. Uh, well, okay, so this guy's scared. So right off the bat, we have to kind of bring that down. I just want to be able to... Is this the only thing loose in the box? That we Maybe. Know. Probably quite likely this animal has a uh, history of mites. I see some swelling around the eyes. And what mites do, they're, they're blood suckers. So they're going to basically rob this guy of blood. Uh, plasma, so they're feeding on that. Uh, this guy looks a little skinny. His head looks a little caved in too. I'm not sure he has any mites right now, but I kind of want to uh, address that. So first thing I do is I want to just stop him from wanting to bite. And so I'm going to, there we go. That works. All right, definitely see loose Burmese python and I see a bag. So, oh, that. Yeah, this is. Was this in the rain? Seriously. Where was this? Because I hear Wally, because we're really thankful we found it. Like, it all right, so this was. I thought it was produce. So, generally, what they do is they bring it into our store. But one time I had somebody dump off a Nile crocodile in a box. We're like, oh, what's this? And I opened it up and I'm like, oh my God, it's a freaking. I was like, I can't even believe this is a Nile crocodile. And it was, and it was stuffed in a little box. Nice box. This, yo, this is heavy duty cod. Oh, God, this looks beat. <laughs> Dude, this this was this is this actually went through the rain and survived. I'm just looking for mites. You don't want them to get into our collection. I don't want them. Okay. All right. So first thing, Let's see if I can touch the poor little guy. All right, so this looks like, uh, about a six foot Burmese python, uh, female. That's an older animal. I can tell you right off the bat. So this, this snake is, this snake could be seven years old, eight years old. I'm looking at an upper, upper respiratory infection, mm -hmm. which, I mean, this animal's through a lot of stress. <laughs> so, might, <laughs> might, might, might. Okay. So I'm seeing there was just bubbles. This this guy's really yeah, this has had mites and maybe dirt. Okay. The animal's got uh, fair weight. I cannot I can tell you this animal's been through some tough times because what I'm feeling right here is bones right along here. So that's where, you know, when things start getting tough, they're gonna take the fat out of their tail. So you can feel like this this ridge right here. You can tell it's an older animal because this is a female. It's got really, really involved claws. And as these animals age, these claws get older. I mean, excuse me, as they age, the claws get bigger <laughs> or longer. I'm like older, my God. I, I mean, in theory, yes, it's older too. But, but yes, you know, that's true. So, uh, doesn't really, I mean, a, a little bit of upper respiratory, so what is, I, I noticed like froth and spittle and some stuff like that. Um, and this snake is kind of upset. You also notice that this head is kind of small, like thin. In this way, it's narrow. Hi, buddy. I don't know how your life has been. It's very, very upset. This is a healed belly burn. Okay. See right there? See that little crease right there? So that has healed. This is a an old this is a old belly burn. We have more melanin on parts of this animal's belly, and I can tell just by so this skew, so this belly skew, which should be normally just wide, and that basically fixes to a pair of ribs. There's a kind of a crease that's kind of damaged, and that means that that animal at some point had a hot surface where it was uh, trying to heat up, and they don't really have much for receptors on there ventral area so the animal trying to heat up is sitting on something maybe a heat source that's not regulated it gets really hot and ultimately damages the tissue so see right here I'm gonna give you a comparison you can see see the color yep. you can see that right Donnie yep. so you see what I'm talking about the difference hi buddy so the next step she's gonna go into a bath yeah we're gonna yeah, I don't see anything live. And there's plenty dirt. of dirt, yeah. Oh, let's play Name That Snake. Oh. Let's stick your hand in there. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is, no, this is Parson's Parson's son, does it? Why can't you? Hold on. All right, 
I can tell you this is a ball python. This one. Uh, I felt its tail. <laughs> it's got yeah. a short, short tail. So, and it doesn't have the body characteristics of a, a short tail python or blood python, which actually has an elongated uh, vertebrae, which gives it a taller stature as far as its body. That's a, that's a male. This looks pretty good. Hi, buddy. It's dark, dark. So I would just pretty much say, so this would be like a, a black pastel coral glow. You can see, so we have black pastel, might, might even have yellow belly in there. But uh, this actually, this ball python looks, looks great. So we'll get another bin. Yep. Okay, let's play name the snake. I'm feeling its tail. Got different, totally different muscles than um, a ball python. It's it's taller body, it's muscular. I felt its nose though. The nose is. It's a boa. You can you can. It's got that point like that nose. One more. I don't. <laughs> I'll buy him. <laughs> Be cool. So this is a uh, Central America. This is like a Nicaraguan boa. I uh, see. See the the pointy nose. Yeah. Hi. Anybody? All right. This looks in good good health too. Oh, and you're probably a freak. All right. They're all very. Um, so their personalities on all these snakes for a uh, so girl. Personality in these snakes is very, very, at least on the Burmese python and this boa, very, very, uh, I don't know, might have to do with just sitting in a box for that time and what it actually underwent, but it's very, very nervous. And boas, when they're very fearful, they'll pull their tail and sometimes coil their, their tail and very, very touchy on the tail. So it's uh, not a very social animal, as, as I can see. But uh, looks nice and healthy. Jeremy's gonna give me uh, another bend. And I got something else. We'll get these guys healthy, and then do you think we'll be looking for forever homes? For oh, yeah, guys? yeah, for sure. So definitely, if you guys are interested in any of these animals, we're going to make sure they're good and healthy, and then we're going to we're gonna probably come back to them in a video. Now, but an hour later, what came in? Okay, this is interesting. I got a couple of iguanas. These were uh, left by a gate at a, a trail side museum yeah and uh they sent me a picture and said do you want these so they were this is they came in a little bin and somebody dumped it there and, and they don't keep reptiles like this so i said yeah i'll take those they came in this container this is this is where they were dropped off in this container the person ferried the animals to us and this is the container that they were in First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take these, we're gonna put them in another container and address them. But it looks like a pair of uh, young El Salvador, not a pair, two El Salvadorian blue iguanas. And I see one that's really grumpy. Which one? This one on top. You're very, oh yeah. And one of them does not look good. Okay, so contrary to probably what you think, iguanas can give you a really bad bite. watching him just because he really looked like very very grumpy there we go bring it down nice and healthy uh, it's a little girl hi these guys get these two little rostral um, little spines so these little just little things that stick up and 
and uh, you're not bad. You're not bad. It's very scary. So this one's really pretty healthy. Not bad. What iguanas will do? They have this little trick where they're going to take that back foot and they're going to cat. They got those long toes. Here we go. And uh, they'll they'll kind of bring it up forward and they'll snag your finger. So one of the the, the great ways to, to manage something like a monitor, we take their legs and we kind of just do this and we don't let them extend them and flail about. They're gonna, you know, it's just gonna decrease their activity. But that little mouth right there, that can give you a really gnarly bite. I don't want to get bit by this at all. You never know what these animals are experiencing or what they've felt to this point or anything like that. So you always have to expect the worst and uh, you just are just kind of give them uh, some stability in their existence. But this would be a perfect animal to uh, put out for adoption. We'll, have, we'll set it up for a little bit. But it, it looks, I mean, I'm not noticing any metabolic bone disease, no uh, fibrous tissue on this one. I want to get to that. Is Jeremy going to get us a bin? Okay, let me go get a bin. Okay, so see right here? So I want to be very nervous. You're very spooked. You're not. Oh, yes. That's all I want to do. Just kind of busy the head. And we're good. Hi. Actually, really pretty iguanas. They're nice. If this guy was a little bit healthier, he really has some nice orange on you. Um, when they're this size, they're ultra, ultra paranoid. They just think everything wants to get them. You do. So let's look at the condition of this animal. So we're a little, we're a little underweight. So we're seeing the hip bones. So that means that you know it didn't have optimal. Uh, food available and the other one is probably the one that's actually dominating this so even though the keeper was putting in maybe appropriate meals and, and food the the more dominant one is getting all the food so I feel I can feel the vertebrae right there just like the Burmese Python and uh, but it's still got its tail all right all right so this one's had some metabolic bone disease I can feel where everything hardens up so what metabolic bone disease will do is when you don't have enough calcium, you don't have the D3 hormone available to actually allow it to uh, synthesize and use the calcium for bone growth and nerve connections, uh, they will then, uh, they'll try to protect like an injury, but in this case, it's actually the uh, quality of their bones and being able to support their body. What the body does is it tries to localize in, uh, like a wound, it's actually going to try to prevent it from moving so it can heal. And they'll put all this fibrous tissue, and I can feel the fibrous tissue, and that can take a long time to go away, even after it's healed. Oh, this is probably a bite from the other one. See right there? This is all really hard. So this animal's already attempting to uh, heal, but this is all very hard right here. So now that this elbow joint I'm not really, I'm getting, I'm not gonna push too hard, but the range of motion is very, very diminished. And this would call for physical therapy <laughs> and uh, proper, you know, situation. But you can see that really tough spot right there. Another thing we do when we're looking for metabolic bone disease, I know, I know. I'm gonna feel, what I do is I take the jaw and I, push inward just a little bit and it's not spongy at all so it's not really flexing much it looks pretty good the inside of his mouth actually looks really good uh, eyes are really bright this little wound is pretty much superficial so I, this is an animal when two months under you know just correct conditions can um, can really change a lot another place you're gonna see metabolic bone disease is right here along the lower mandible and what they start doing is, see this little bump right here? That will start thickening along this bone as they're trying to uh, support the, the mandible because there's lack of calcium and they'll start getting these uh, hard areas with like fibrous tissue and it also calcifies when calcium is available. So it can have uh, some uh, irreparable 
long-term conditions that you'll see, even though if you correct the problem, you're going to still see an animal with uh, showing that some period in its life it went through a tough stage. This is probably never going to be quite normal, but I mean the animal can still have a uh, fine quality life and, and a happy life. Right now it's just ultra, ultra paranoid. So this one is definitely the loser in that situation. All right, so we're gonna, we can come back to this animal right here. This animal's uh, hopefully in the right place. Hopefully we're gonna do you know a, a nice service and kind of fix this guy up and not make him ultra paranoid of life. He's very, very paranoid. We're gonna revisit the snake that uh, I was working on roughly a week ago. So this is the animal that had the prolapsed cloaca, or distended cloaca. And uh, I've been managing this. So believe it or not guys, I've been keeping this animal in water baths the whole time. And I've been giving it, uh, last time I was saying, it was either genomycin or amicacin. I ended up going for amicacin on this one, but amicacin and genomycin are very, very uh, similar as far as uh, the spectrum of uh, gram-negative bacteria they're dealing. This animal's looking really good. So I don't see any signs of infection. Uh, I have been sloughing off some material. So what I've been doing is I've actually been taking a uh, 40 cc or 30 cc syringe and I've been um, irrigating inside the cloaca with a, a very, very dilute chlorhexidine and water and trying to uh, get any kind of uh, dead material out of there and periodically bits of stuff come out there managing a systemic antibiotic. The animal's doing really good. I think we're uh, in, in great shape. Uh, the whole outside of the cloaca has pretty much sloughed off. And I was calling it skin, but it's really, it's the tissue going over that part. So um, there was uh, a perforation that we were noticing in the bowel where some of the stuff was coming out and that was the thing that was very, very scary. So the, the antibiotics. And another thing I want to tell you what I did I was really worried about uh, anaerobic bacteria. I put it on metronidazole. So metronidazole is flagile. And it also has a very uh, strong effect in some cases on anaerobic bacteria, as well as killing protozoa and amoeba. And these are all typical things in the GI tract. But when animals uh, feel sick, they're stressed out, sometimes the balance of the microbes in their gut that normally could be fine, get out of order. So they, they uh, occur in too large of a number. They cause these uh, minute little ulcerations in the uh, GI tract. It ultimately could cause like stomach aches, discomfort, failure of the animal doing well, and uh, it actually can cause respiratory infections as a secondary thing. As the, the flagellates and the protozoans start ulcerating the GI tract, it takes the animal and puts the animal into a, a downward spiral. It's not feeling well, and then it manifests itself as a secondary infection, which we see as an upper respiratory infection. And they start bubbling, they start doing stuff like that, and they bloat up. And a lot of times that's also a really good indicator of anaerobic bacteria. So anyways, everything's looking good, not bloating. She's on point. We can go back and look inside her mouth again. Mouth looks just killer. You see that? Now you guys notice she's not biting me, right? No bite. No bite. Because she knows I'm not going to hurt her. Isn't that kind of cool? I can put my fingers in snakes' mouths. Not all of them. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, she's good. So we have, I'm just looking at her overall thing. Remember we, we I, I really, I get a little bit excited now because I've been reading everybody's comments and it actually, there's some of you that are valuing what we're doing. Some of you guys are I, actually I, great. I love it. I feel uh, quite optimistic about this animal's uh, future. And I think we did the right things to actually help this animal. I want to help people recognize problems and come up with solutions. And a lot of times coming up with solutions when you don't have the availability of an experienced vet or you're physically not even able to find one or whatever. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!